into the space we come. Perhaps broken and searching, tired and weary, or filled with hope and joy in our hearts, <laughs> anticipating an uncertain future. May we bring our whole selves, our brightest light to this time we share together so that we may sustain each other through these challenging times. Dans cet espace, nous nous retrouvons, peut-être brisés et insatisfaits, fatigués et au bout de nos forces, ou remplis d'espérance et de joie dans nos cœurs, dans l'attente d'un avenir incertain. Puissions-nous venir tels que nous sommes? Puissions-nous apporter toute notre lumière dans cet espace partagé pour que nous puissions nous soutenir mutuellement pendant ces temps difficiles? We acknowledge our need to address racism that has led and continues to lead to the violent deaths of Blacks and Indigenous peoples. And we acknowledge that anti-Black racism and settler colonialism create and perpetuate inequalities, injustices, poverty, and exclusion in Canadian society. I'm so grateful to Beverly, who you who were willing to step in at the last minute to add these very important words that you shared with us in the workshop yesterday. After the workshop that I did with you and Kirsten, I went to one from Stephen Paquette, who's one of the CUC's elders in residence, an Anishinaabe. One of the things that I learned from Stephen was how, for many of us that were referring them to as, them as, as land acknowledgements, he said for in his culture and for other uh, many indigenous cultures, rather than thinking of them as land acknowledgements, they're opening words. And that these words are to remind us of being in relationship. So from what I learned from Stephen, here's my part of the acknowledgement. I'm grateful for the earth, that which gives life to all of us. And to remind myself that I'm in sacred relationship with the earth. The original stewards of the earth, the fish, the animals, the birds, the insects, and that we're all interconnected in this web of life. Stephen described the trees as the first nations, that they give of their themselves for for their fire, for giving shelter for us and other beings. And to think of them and the plants that give us nutrients and medicines, to think of them as relatives that are part of that connectedness in relationship that is sacred, sacred rather than thinking of it as, as them as being resources to us as humans. I also acknowledge the first peoples of this land. And as you all are muted where you are, speak out loud or type into the chat the names of those first peoples in the territories that you're on, if you'd like to. I'm on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, in particular, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh. Because we're part of the Canadian Unitarian Council, we made an ongoing commitment, not only to envision a world where our interdependence calls us to love and justice, but to make it a reality for Black, Indigenous, and people of color, for the earth, for all beings. So I call on all our ancestors to help us make it so. We're in a dangerous time. We're experiencing a history changing time, a pandemic. And it sits on the shoulders of a culture that some call post-religious. And these changes with others endanger our communities. They endanger how we live our individual lives. 
and they can be heartbreaking for our families. There can even be times when we wonder if our work together is worth the effort. In balance, during this dangerous time, we wanted to tell you a story. And this story is our story. It starts with our ancestors who, with their courage and strength, left a legacy for us. They left us buildings and money and theology and practice in this big land, often at great risk to themselves. Their sacrifice made our faith possible, and their legacy reminds us that we need each other to form a stronger voice, a loving presence, and a social conscience. Their light needs to be tended by us now. And this story is also about our present. We have brought our stories to this extended Unitarian Universalist community. We have arrived with our own experiences, including our longing for connections, our wish to be accepted and healed and our longing to do work in this world that matters to ourselves and others. We're being invited to bring our whole selves, as scary as that may be. Even in this COVID time, we need to build and rebuild our communities with respect for the web we live within. And no matter where we come from, no matter what we look like, no matter how much money we have or who we love, we are invited to belong here as Unitarian Universalists, here and now. And this story, it's about our future. But of course, it's not written yet. We still need to build the future. We need to fund the future. We need to bring our family and friends to the future so it becomes strong. So listen with me as our members tell you how they need you, as our ministers remind you how they need you, why they need you, why they need us, you and me and all of us. And I'll listen with you. Bless you. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion.
Hi, we're from the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Winnipeg. Did you know that in addition to our seven Unitarian Universalist principles and our six UU sources, Canadians have something else to guide us? As Canadian Unitarian Universalists, we have five aspirations to help us grow. We aspire to be... Deeply connected. We strive to foster healthy relationships within UU communities, with the broader world, and with all life. Radically inclusive, we strive to create hospitable, diverse, multi-generational communities. Actively engaged. We strive to work joyfully for a just and compassionate society, experimenting with new forms of community. Theologically alive, we seek to be ever evolving in our understanding, open to new knowledge. And spiritually grounded, we seek transformation through personal spiritual experiences and shared rituals. Today's offering will support and enhance the work of the Canadian Unitarian Council that the Council is doing to engage our congregations and communities to provide connections and resources, heighten our social justice and reconciliation work, to work with congregations on refugee sponsorship, to provide resources and programs for youth, young adults, and UUs of all ages, and to be the National Unitarian Universalist organization that you can count on. To donate by text, send a, message, a text message to 716-293-2525, I'll say that again, 716-293-2525, and click on the link uh, you receive. This takes you to the special collections form and fill out the information there. To donate online instead, go to https colon backslash backslash cuc.ca backslash. Click donate and choose special collections and fill out the information. Data rates may apply and donations for this service will be accepted until Wednesday at noon Eastern time. Thank you for your generosity. I'm 
Once, not very long ago, on a rocky coast, not very far away, stood a lighthouse. Once upon a time, its red and white paint had gleamed in the sunshine. But now, after years of sun and storms, its paint stood peeling, its windows salted over. Up closer to the big city, where the port and the harbors and the marinas were, the lighthouses had all been connected, electrified, stood shining their beacons out over the water, but this one poor little lighthouse cowered close to the rocks. On the evening where our story takes place, this little lighthouse was looking out at the most beautiful sunset when all of a sudden clouds began to amass along the horizon and suddenly lightning and thunder and rain were crashing all around it. With dismay, it looked up the coast and saw the lighthouses and all of the lights in the city winking out one after another. It shuddered as its own generator kicked in and its own feeble light was restored. Well, the lighthouse looked out into that stormy weather, unsure if its light would even make it through. In the distance, it saw a great cruise ship. Through the lights of the window, the lighthouse could see people dancing and celebrating, unaffected by the storm around them. Further out into the bay, a naval ship was passing by. 
its lights pointed steady forward, never changing track unaffected by the storm. The little lighthouse shook in the violent winds, its lights crackling on and off as the generator hummed, working harder than it ever had before. Rain slashed at the windows, wind tearing at the paint. The little lighthouse wasn't sure that it could go on, though what did it matter? A naval ship, a cruise ship, what need had they of a little bit of light? Certainly they knew where they were going. They were caught in the same storm, but seemed unaffected. And then, as its light swept across the very most southern arc, it saw one little red light, one little white light blinking. A tiny ship caught in this most massive of storms. The lighthouse shuddered its generator clicking on and off, desperate to hold that light out in front of the tiny ship, rocked amongst the waves, so precarious and heading for home, as one particularly strong clap of thunder shook its walls. The generator flicked, but the lighthouse knew that this was not the end. With all its strength, it rumbled the generator back to life, the arc of its beam sweeping out over the water, guiding the little ship home. The lighthouse watched, dismayed, as the little boat shook in the waves, rocked by the seas around it. And still the lighthouse held on. And as the storm subsided, and the light from the lighthouse swept around and around, the small boat made its way safely home. From the light of days remembered Burns a beacon bright and clear Guiding hand and hearts and spirits into fear set free from fear when the fire of commitment sets our mind and soul ablaze when our hunger and our passion me to call us on our way when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin from coast to coast to coast through the vast geography of our land our faith has been a light for freedom a light of reason and a light of love for almost 200 years. Our ancestors of faith arrived on ships and trains and horse-drawn wagons to seed the first Unitarian and Universalist congregations. They met in taverns and living rooms before they had their very first buildings. We exist today because of the resilience and the vision of farmers and bankers, painters and politicians, students and teachers. The earliest of them were inspired by a God of unity and a commitment to a free faith. And as they moved across the continent, they picked up and incorporated the transcendental and the rational 
as respectable paths to wisdom. And always the deep commitment to social action. Our ancestors sacrificed to create our congregations. You know, they lived through epidemics of cholera and flu. They lived through wars, political and social unrest, great depressions, and endless winters. But still they opened their doors on a Sunday morning, determined and resilient to sing and to pray together. And our faith grew. And you know, there were times of really fast expansion when Sunday schools were full and they had to meet on weeknights and as well as the weekends. And there were times when thousands of people came to hear liberal religious ministers give lectures in cavernous halls on humanism. And there were times of struggle when congregations shrank and doors closed. And yet, here we are today. We're here today because good people realize that together they were stronger, that together they could survive and thrive. And together they could influence the world that they lived in. We are here today because our ancestors knew this faith was important and worth investing in. I'm going to ask you now to use your imaginations. Close your eyes if it helps you focus. I want you to imagine in your mind's eye the outline of Canada, the shape of Canada. And now I want you to take that image and kind of darken it as if it was the middle of the night. And into that picture, Imagine that you can see the blinking lights of every one of our ancestors, generation upon generation. A light for every person who gave their hearts and their life energy to build up this faith. There are bright clumps of lights where congregations grew, like in Southern BC and Alberta and uh, Ontario and Quebec. There are twinkling lights in Alberta and Saskatchewan and Manitoba and pulsing lights from Vancouver Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Prince Edward Island. And then a, a sprinkling of lights, tiny lights between all of those. Decade after decade, the lights expanded as Unitarians and Universalists built their congregations. And yet, can you see how much space, how much darkness there is between all those lights? So much land between us. Our ancestors of old were, bored, were bold and determined people. They knew they needed each other to survive. They didn't let the vast wilderness between their fires diminished their commitment. Their light has always been stronger than their numbers. Their influence more powerful than their size. Because of them, we are here. And now we need you. From the stories of our living rings a song both brave and free, calling pilgrims still to witness to the life of liberty when the fire of commitment 
sets our mind and soul ablaze. When our hunger and our passion meet to call us on our way, when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. And now, here we are. Imagine our country, it's forests and prairies, the lakes and coastlines. Scan the vastness and, the Im and imagine that you can see a few blinking lights the glow of our congregation scattered across the vast landscape. So few, and yet they shine brightly, lighthouses, beacons for those seeking spiritual sustenance, seeking community, the longing for belonging that is magnified in these days of imposed separation and quarantine. From the stories of our living rings a song both brave and free. We have our individual stories, each of us arriving with our experiences, our wounds and our brokenness, our longing for connection. The invitation is to bring our whole selves, to bring our broken hearts, to bring our anger and our conscience that fuels the work of justice, to bring our joy and passion that lights the way to compassion, to bring our loving, our courage and conviction, to bring our need for healing and our power to heal. And also to hear each other's stories as well including and especially the voices often not heard. Let us bring our whole selves to the communal struggle to be the beloved community. In this time, we are asked, called and inspired to seek new ways of connecting, of fueling the lighthouse beacons that those searching may find us and those already here may be warmed by its glow. May this chapter of our story include articulating, sharing, and living out our good news. The good news of our theology of wholeness and aspirations that invite us to look upon the world with eyes that see both injustice and beauty. Ears that hear the music and the cries of pain. Let us drink deeply from the chalice of life. Let us touch and be touched. With reason to impel curiosity compassion to fuel courage, and the realization of what is possible when the vision expressed in our principles is incarnated in the world. Let us shine our beacon ever more brightly. We are being called to share our understanding of what religious community, beloved community, can and must be if we are to be agents of transformation in a world broken and needing healing. 
these present times have so many challenges. And as well, it offers opportunities. While we are limited to this virtual world, these tiny images of each other, we are less burdened by the physical distance between us. The gift of this service today is a consequence of these current times, uniting us across the vastness of this country and beyond. People are finding us as they virtually search for connection, and they can join us no matter where they are. Yes, the connection has limitations in many ways, and yet it is expansive in others. We are living communities built through the sharing of insights and celebrations, struggles and challenges, aspirations and actions. This is the stuff that binds people together beyond all personal diversity. This is the meaning of religion to bind together. And this is all still happening. Our beacons are shining from coast to coast to coast and now around the globe. Because of them, we are here. Because of us, they will be here. This present moment is the flame that feeds the light that can sustain us for the future. We need one another. Blessing. Join us in a ritual we have used in our congregation many times. It's a healing ritual it's like a meditation with a very human focus. In this ritual, we will use music to help us hold a sacred place. We will use words to remind us that there is more than reason to a human life. And we will use hope for healing and for growth. I want you to know that a healing ritual cannot cure anyone, yet I believe that we can all be healed. Suzanne, the music director at our congregation at Neighborhood will teach the song, which is more like a chant. And then I can offer a brief explanation before we begin. Suzanne. I am with you that I might heal. You are with me that you might heal. We are together that we might heal and we are healing that we may love. We'll do a call and response and teach you the chant. It'll continue throughout the ritual. I encourage you to sing along, to be engaged and to be connected heart, soul and body with all the UUs across Canada that are tuned in today. It starts. I am with you that I might heal. Everyone. I am with you that I might heal. Second line. You are with me that you might heal. You are with me that you might heal. We are together that we might heal. We are Talk together, together that we, we might, might heal. We are healing that we, we might heal. We are we healing are that, that we Try it one time all together. I am with you that, that you might heal. You are, you are with 
of me that are mine. A ritual is an event within a community where we can hold each other in our figurative arms, even when we can't be in the same room. We can calm our minds, maybe close our eyes and allow the chant to hold us. We give up control or the fantasy of control like a long meditation with music, except that this ritual is participatory. After I finish speaking for a few moments, a recording of Suzanne will play the chant she just taught us. And while she's doing this, take your time to settle in and listen. Sing if you wish and consider the words of the chant. Then if you are moved, send a note through the chat with the name of someone you wish to be heard by this sacred gathering. Someone who might need support or healing or love. You can type it in the Zoom chat or in the YouTube chat, one name, and I will read it for all of us to hear. A name for a person to be healed and it could be your own. We will all hear the name and send our best wishes. If you do not do this, simply sit quietly and rest. Hold the space. Stay with us. Becoming a community that can hold spirit as well as speak with spirit is us. Let me end this ritual with a blessing. And during the short blessing, can I ask respectfully for you to put one hand on your heart as you reach out the other hand. It's an old act, really, to help us remember that every blessing must go inwardly and outwardly. It's a way to send our healing out and in. Feel that we are together and let healing come to you now. Let the winter buds and the falling leaves remind you life is still beginning. Let the earthy smell of autumn touch you and make you smile and the cool breeze enliven you. Let the healing of the ants and the spiders and the birds touch you. Healing as you wake, healing as you close your eyes to sleep healing inside you and from outside you. We can't all be cured, but we can all be healed. Let healing come to us now. And I bless you with the authority that you brought here. Bless you. Thank you. And it's over. From the dreams of youthful vision comes a new prophetic voice which demands a deeper justice built by our courageous choice. When the fire of commitment sets our mind and soul ablaze, 
when a hunger and a passion meet to call us on our way. When we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. I need you. 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 I need you because my Unitarian Universalist community has provided me with such an escape from everything that's going on. I've spent many hours on Zoom with youth across the country just laughing and talking and pretending like everything's regular. I need you because you gave me the foundations for understanding and appreciating other faiths across the world. I need Unitarian Universalism to know that I'm not alone. I need to know others with whom I share principles and a worldview struggle the same way I do, to continue believing in the goodness of people, to continue believing that though the arc of the moral universe is long, it bends toward justice. I need to know that you're out there too in the struggle. Here in Thunder Bay, I'm a part of Lakehead Unitarian Fellowship. We are a small fellowship group. Together we create a community of supportive people who share common ideals. And, uh, in these strange times, it's nice to feel like we have that touch group. The people who have our back, the people who are thinking of us, and we're thinking about them. And that sense of community, even though we're not together in our beloved little building. Uh, imagine if this pandemic had happened 20 years ago. It would have had very different impact on us. So we can build national community in new ways. And that's really exciting. That's like what the pandemic's really taught us is that the physical community is important, but we can still create community without being together. Some youth, or a lot of youth feel very disconnected from the greater community. And it's almost up to us in a lot of ways to bridge that gap. And I think that the greater community needs to really come together. So a lot of what youth are really worried about right now is climate justice and indigenous rights. Those are things we really need to be focusing on. There's some interesting things that are happening right now with youth. There's a couple things in the works, um, a separate entity from the CUC, but still like in affiliation with it. Yeah, I'm really excited about what we're doing. So yeah. The U I'll start off with are individual congregants in my church. There are some in particular that I need on a daily basis. They hang in with me and support me and nudge me along when that's, that's what's needed. As far as my congregation is concerned, they keep me busy, which is sometimes a good thing and uh, sometimes a bad thing, but feeling purposeful is, is a need. I was at the the GA in New Orleans with Julie Stoneberg, and we were both in the business meeting when the eighth principle resolution came forward. So we said, hmm, what might this look like in the Canadian context? We thought it was something that we need uh, in Canada. So that, that started a whole interesting journey that we are still on right now. That's all about need. And I, I think the need for this racial justice work has just been highlighted by the events of the summer. So I'm glad for this work now because I have, I have a you in terms of the study group and the broader you in terms of the members of the congregations that make up um, the CUC. My hope too is that we'll get over our challenges with um, proselytizing is probably too strong a word, but sharing the light. <laughs> There's, there's something unique about this faith tradition. And I think if we, if we allowed it to, it's just the kind of faith movement for a moment, like historical moment like this. So I was a senior job when this started. And so I was really involved with the CUC and I got the monthly check-ins with them. And it kept me feeling really grounded when 
everything else felt completely out of control. I had some people to go to to say, I'm panicking, I'm scared, I don't know what's happening, I don't know when I'm going to see my friends or my family. And I had people to talk to about that and who understood and who were also going through the same thing. And then Casey and her group of young adults and the three ministers have done a, a young adult check-in. And that's another way that I've stayed really grounded and connected with my faith. And I think it's been the one constant that I have been able to feel connected to and that I know will always be there. Whereas everything else right now is kind of up in the air. My belief in this community and support within this community is always there. I need you because we are of one body. As an old scripture has said, the creator of life has put together all the parts of the body. The body does not take sides. It knows if one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. I need you because together we are one. Most of being human is about your relationships with other people and the communities that you have and are a part of. And we, we need to keep existing to continue to have that and to continue to have that light and that hope and joyfulness in our lives. And I know my Unitarian Universalist communities has provided me with so much of that. And I hate the idea of losing that. Yeah, definitely, I'm going to need that in my life. We need you. 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 From the
I need you. We need you. We need each other. May the light within all of us be blessed and may the fire of our commitment sustain us as individuals, as communities, and as a movement. J'ai besoin de toi. Nous avons besoin de toi. Nous avons besoin les uns les autres. Que la lumière qui anime chacun d'entre nous soit bénie. Que la force de notre engagement nous fortifie comme individu, comme communauté et comme mouvement.